and it needs to develop a deep understanding of how the business operates. A brief word on BIM, because I think it's really important actually for us to think about this just, just briefly. FM is quite rightly being pushed into the centre of, of the BIM world. Um, the current government strategy, current construction strategy from the government, construction 2025, recent government construction strategy that came out uh, not so long ago, 2016 to 2020. It's focused on technology, are we in a place to lead that? Efficiency, sustainability, operating buildings more cost effectively. Stating that facilities management, it says so in these strategies, should be at the heart of the development of BIM in the UK. Should be. There's been a huge amount of really good work here, don't get me wrong, for example the work that, we have a name drop, that Deborah Rowland has done at the MOJ, now at the MOD, uh, and this should be rightly celebrated. But nevertheless, there's still no clear, widely available set of guidelines for FM on what the key core skills are and the learning needed to enable FM to cement its position as industry leaders in the implementation of BIM. We don't have the tools to do it at the moment, in my view. I think the filtration or the, or the dripping down, if you like, of learning and knowledge to the wider industry sector, it's, it's too slow. And I feel we're disadvantaged in our sector. I said a moment ago, the implementation of BIM. And I think this is the key thing for FM. FM and property managers do not need to have the in-depth expertise of a CAD modeler, CAD modeler or BIM operative to be successful here, akin to the way in which FM is successful in all other areas of property, in their property management that it deals with. We need to identify what the client needs are, what skill sets will deliver this, plan the most efficient way of achieving a successful outcome. And that's what we're really good at. We always have been. So what questions do we need to ask and when? How many of us can identify sat here now, employ, employs information requirements, and understand what the outputs are from the different members of the design team? Maybe some of us can. It's not a uniform approach. What are the steps we need to take and the issues to consider when implementing the BIM process in our building stock? So that's new or retrofit. And perhaps most importantly, and I touched on this with some of the people that I've spoken to already today, how many of us can stand in front of the CFO and clearly explain the persuasive business case for BIM. Not enough examples yet, I don't think. But FM needs to get up to speed with these issues, and it needs to do it quickly. There's a plethora of guidance out there, including soft landings material published by Bizria, how the, uh, and, and now the BIFM's Operational Readiness Guide, as well as different PAS statements, 1192, 3, 4, 5. I encourage you all to read them. I still feel, though, that we as an industry we need to produce our own guide that says, for FM, this is how, well, this is the steps to take. This is the framework within which you'll come to a successful outcome. PAS 11.92.2, not on there, is based to some extent on BS 11.92 from 2007. So, so much of the thinking here is not new, but how many of us in FM have a good working knowledge of BS 11.92 and understand the methodologies it sets out for managing the production, distribution, quality of design, construction information, all of which informs the operational phase which we're responsible for. And remember, the <coughs> majority of us in our world of work, I was talking about BIM a little bit more, this is not about a more advanced way to design and build a structure or about 3D modelling. No one else does that. These are a means to an end. And that end is a set of building information documentation, data that should make managing and operating a building much easier. And that's why it's so important to us and why we should care about this. And for those of us that think this is a construction issue, I would caution you to get on board with this now. You may not have a requirement for it now and your supply chain may not be using it now, or they may be with other clients. But for substantial projects and developments, irrespective of sector, the way in which information is arranged and managed in what we understand now to be a BIM way, using some of the standards that I've mentioned there, I believe will become the norm for the future. Might not be next year, might not be five years, but it will be the way we're operating in years to come. If you think about it, why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't we have an information, a set of information guidelines that clearly structures what we need to operate buildings? Of course, it's the time scale, going back to my crystal ball, which none of us can really know at this point, uh, despite the government's mandate for Level 2 in April. Good to have a target. Never going to meet it. Underlying all of this, in the, uh, of course, is the gap in performance before, uh, between design and uh, operation. And again, this is a big, big area for FM, something that we have all in this room, I'm sure, had to deal with in the past. And this is a serious issue. 
bizarrely, it does not really get the attention it deserves. Although I think this is perhaps starting to change slightly now. For example, if we consider the office space below an EPC rating, I think it was of E, someone might change that, tell me that I'm wrong. Won't, you will not be able to rent that space from, I think it's 2019, something like that. Energy and sustainability are very, very important themes for FM, and one of the main areas where performance levels predicted during design are not meeting performance in use. The legislative, legislative and regulatory landscape is confusing, confusing for the main protagonists, and not having the impact or giving the direction it should. The government's announced the abol abolishment of the Carbon Reduction Commitment Energy Efficiency Scheme, CRC, it's even difficult to say, let alone implement, to be gone by 2019 and replaced with something else. Not because it's not needed, but because it was too unwieldy and too confusing. You could see that from its inception. And at this point, we can, I think, expect, at least, uh, I think it's actually been stated in the press, we can state an increase in the climate change levy for most businesses that are currently in the CRC. So that's a simpler form of energy taxation. The key issue here, of course, is for owners and occupiers to collaborate on improving energy and carbon performance. And this is a serious issue. With anticipated performance, relating back to the design and build phases, the actual energy use, and there's plenty of uh, um, evidence out there that will, will back this up, can be two or three times higher than that calculated at design stage. The recent report from the Carbon Trust, the energy efficiency claims are not credible, where 5% of respondents to a survey of 135 commercial organisations polled had any confidence in the performance data provided by manufacturers of equipment. They just didn't believe it was going to meet anything like the targets that it was saying it was going to. Now, I know this can be for a range of reasons. For example, design stage calculations may be based on, on those from laboratory or sterile conditions. They don't take any account of how the building performs in use. It's OK until you open the doors and let people in. But could it be that design performance is not meeting actual or in-use performance because the realities or practicalities of a real-life situation of a building in use have not been considered. And this surely is where FM can and must exert its influence and knowledge. And I go back again to the fact that what are the skill sets, what's the framework of legislation that's going to help us do that? FM, as we, we all like to say, I think is the guardian of the workspace. I didn't write that. We ensure a safe, comfortable and stimulating working environment. That's true. And we can't resolve every issue but we should know who to turn to, and we absolutely must know what is involved in providing a solution. What are the risks and implications of doing so? It's not desirable, but it's essential that we're proactive on our approach. The rise of technology not only means we need to keep up, but those parts of our industry that naturally have a closer, more detailed knowledge of the latest technology will be better placed to provide the solutions our customers need. And this leads to the discussion, and I won't spend any time on this, as to whether the facilities manager will become redundant due to the relentless advance of technology. Well, as I say, there's no time to do that justice here today. Personally speaking, I don't think it will at all. Um, but what I do think, however, is our role will become a more tactical and strategic one. It needs to do that to stay relevant and to have the influence it needs. By the way, the Building Information for Modelling for Dummies is an excellent book. So that is a really, really good introduction. If you don't actually know... Uh, how BIM can impact on our world, that's a really good way to start off, not to sort of plug their, their particular, that particular book. So what about data management? I've mentioned it a little bit. Expertise in the management of property information is another key area I think FM can evidence value to a business. And I think we should be shouting louder at this. We're really, really good at it, we should be. Today's buildings and systems that control them <coughs> can generate enormous quantities of data, but the systems built to manage this data are not leveraging the value that they should. The implementation of standard protocols around building condition, performance that links BIM with BMS systems, spoke a little bit about it today already with people that I've spoken to, needs to be a standard offering from the FM community, not viewed as a, a value add or a bolt on, or the sole domain of other professions such as architects or engineers. I think FM has always needed to be good uh, at information management and the management of information to do with property to be good at it, to be successful in their roles. Property, sta property data standardisation is not new, but with the advent of BIM and the multitude of standards and guidance published in recent times, client teams can often benefit from expertise and direction on how to get the best out of the services that they are, they are tasked with providing. One certain way of ensuring you get the data you need from your FM services 
is to make this clear in the contractual arrangements with your FM service providers. We think we're good at that. We're not always, I don't think. Whether that's a service level agreement with internal workforces,